Hi guys, this is Philip with the Desmos Visionary. I'm here with a super exciting graph today, and we're going to be looking at Lazash's curves. Now, quick background on Lazash's curves, I read this from Wolf from Alpha. Basically, they're a curve where the y values and the x values um, oscillate, but at different periods, and they make these cool graphs, and I'll show you how to make those today. First, we're going to examine what we have graphed here in Desmos. I've got a parametric equation uh, where I have cosine and sine. Uh, and then I've got this nice variable a, which we're going to vary. And you can notice that this a is multiplied by t here. And all that's going to do is change how quickly the y values will oscillate uh, as a ratio with the x values. So if a is 1, the y values will oscillate one time when the, uh, the x values oscillate one time. Uh, and if we change a to 2, then the y values will oscillate twice, while the x values oscillate once. Finally, I have this point down here, which we're going to use to play with the graph a little bit more. And this is, I've just copied this and typed b in for t, and that's just going to allow us to type in a specific point on the line. Uh, so if t was 4.6, for instance, we would have this point, uh, and we can change that how we like, which is fun. So, Lazash's curves. As I explained earlier, it's when you change the ratio of how much the y values oscillate and the x values oscillate. Um, so first, let's just look at the animation here. Uh, I think it's absolutely beautiful, and you can watch uh, this go... I could watch this go for hours. Um, what we have here is pretty interesting. When we graph an integer, uh, and notice our parametric equation is only from 0 to 2 pi. When we grab it, graph an integer, uh, the, the graph is complete. It gets back to itself. Uh, and this is because the ratio of this period and this period is uh, a factor of 2 pi. Uh, when we change this to some weird decimal value, let's try the lower decimal value to make this more obvious. Um, clearly this point and this point don't line up, uh, but because this is 6 fifths, if we change this to 10 pi, uh, it should line up very well. And we could run this point all along the graph if we wanted to. Uh, what's neat about this is now that we've graphed a ton of values, uh, we can look at an even cooler animation. And this is super cool to me. I love watching this just move. Uh, it fascinates me. And what we see here is that at every integer value and at every half integer value, the lines seem to converge at one place. But in between, we get this large box of lines going all over the place. Uh, and this is pretty cool. I encourage you to go on Desmos and graph this yourself and play around with it. There are a lot of neat things we can find with it. I want to talk about one more point that we can make with uh, this point that we've graphed on the line. If we change this back to 2 pi, notice as we change the a value that the point goes up and down, but it doesn't move from side to side. In fact, it seems stays the exact same x value, no matter what value of a we plug in. And this is because, in a parametric equation, x is defined as a function, uh, but it doesn't include a in it. So, no matter what a is, the x value is not going to change. But I thought that was a neat occurrence. That's just based on how we happen to graph the Lazash's curve. We could have put a uh, inside the cosine instead of the sine, and that would have uh, flipped how uh, the parametric equations lined up. And you can go into Desmos and try that yourself. But that's all I have for you today on the Lazash's curve. Super interesting and a very cool graph to look at with a pretty simple equation. Thanks for watching. I'm Philip with the Desmos Visionary.